Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. For over 25 years, I've deployed ERP applications for some of the world's largest organizations. During that time, I've taught thousands of people just like you how to discover, use, deploy, and support Oracle's back office applications. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about the negotiations application within Procurement Cloud. Please note that this lesson is part of the negotiations course found within the procurement functional area under the discover menus. But before we get started, did you know that you could earn free discovery badges for display on your LinkedIn profile just by watching videos like this one? You can. Stay until the end of this video and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. Key topics for this lesson are as follows. First, what is a negotiation? Next, what is a program? Then what is an abstract? We'll talk next about negotiation types and subtypes, when negotiations are created, how, where, who or what creates them, and then finally, why are negotiations created? First topic, what is a negotiation? In Oracle Cloud, a negotiation refers to multiple transactions, a sourcing event, the related contract and its back and forth redlining, as well as the related contractual or sourcing compliance steps performed by both external and internal parties. The slide above or this slide that you're looking at shows the relationship as well as the relationship to the suppliers, qualifications and downstream transactions. Second topic, programs. A program is used to organize multiple sourcing events around one or more hard or soft, meaning money or non-money, objectives. They are most common when procurement or the procurement department is looking to achieve a goal across multiple spend categories and or suppliers. For more, see the creating value using procurement cloud lesson. Third topic, abstracts. An abstract is a segment or a portion of a negotiation that is automatically placed on a publicly facing page. This is most popular when an organization must make its sourcing events publicly known, for example, in government procurements. Fourth topic, types and subtypes. So within types and subtypes, negotiations are largely categorized into two different types. RFX, where the X is a wild card for request for information, request for proposal, request for quote, meaning RFI, RFP, RFQ, or auctions. And auctions are usually buy auctions or sell auctions. So in a buy auction, or what's called a reverse auction, the procurement department is auctioning demand that its requesters have. We need 1500 laptops, hey, all you suppliers come bid. In a sell auction, procurement or whatever the firm is, is selling internal items, physical goods that it has for auction to what will be customers. So for example, if there's a large fusion implementation project, a project ends and you've got all these desks and chairs and uh, cubicles, you might want to sell those in a sell auction. Government often will refer to this as surplus property. Okay, so fifth topic, when are negotiations created? <clears throat> so here's our typical procurement services slide, the purchasing services on the top, sourcing on the bottom. <clears throat> so when you have purchasing services, it's all about negotiated content. And so clearly you don't need to negotiate if you've already done that. But when you can't find negotiated content and you complete a non-catalog request, you can see the third step there is to negotiate with your suppliers on what the pricing will be. <clears throat> Sixth topic, how negotiations are created. So negotiations are roughly created in six or so steps. They're as follows. First, you select a style. So a style really refers to the type uh, or, or the think of the cover page instructions for what needs to occur. <clears throat> in, in those, you are mostly, unless you're complicated or you really source a lot, it's good services and then maybe um, where the process is dependent on something else or complex like a public works <clears throat> where you need a fund authorization memo you might need to do that in the style so you might have different styles for those 
Next, you select a template. So a template is just either something we've created or it's a prior negotiation that we want to reuse. And you reuse the lines, the suppliers, the instructions, everything. You can edit them, but that's what you start with. It's really a nice tool when you either want to use or, or negotiate with the same suppliers, or uh, if I decide I want my negotiations to parallel legal types of documents, uh, professional services, hosting, and user license, goods, public works, I can then make templates that have requirements, so the things I need from a supplier that are specific to that type of purchase and marry up well with my legal contracts. So anyway, when you get your style or your template, you publish it, your bidders, or rather suppliers, right? So prospective or spend authorize, they respond. You can monitor those responses and then ultimately you select the award. Next up, topic number seven, where are negotiations created? <clears throat> so it's very common that you'll have the requester's request. They may look in catalogs, they don't find anything. So they add non-catalog lines to a cart. Those carts go through buyer workbench where a buyer takes a look at them and says, oh, this needs to go into a negotiation. They pull those lines into a negotiation. If they pull it into a template, then all of the lines are in the template and they just need to edit it. And that goes out to bidders who respond. And then like we said, they monitor and award. I'm paraphrasing, but that's the process. Eighth topic, who does this? Who creates negotiations? So that's largely buyers and sourcing specialists or what sometimes will also be called category managers. And oftentimes your buyer will create the actual negotiation, but your category manager is the ultimate approver before publishing that. And that's just because they own the categories. And remember, they may be linked to different programs, for example, IT spend. And so we may want them to conform in such a way. Nine topics or ninth topic, why are negotiations created? So negotiations are a key element within Procurement Cloud, perhaps the most key element. If organized correctly, they really focus on all three elements of value. They allow you to decrease unit cost by bringing in pricing competition. They allow you to increase productivity by selecting suppliers who conform to the way you want to do self-service let's say invoice entry, self-service, profile management, et cetera. You may start to choose this supplier over that supplier simply because they increase, increase your productivity because they will do self-service the way you want it done. And then lastly, mitigating your risk by ensuring the correct terms and conditions are documented, right? You can actually document or show the terms and conditions for your contract as part of your uh, negotiation. And that way your suppliers understand their role in uh, keeping certifications, insurance, bonding, all those documents current. They understand what they're going to get in terms of TNC or, or their terms and conditions. Right? So negotiation really is a unique tool in that it really does touch all the key points of value within Fusion Procurement Cloud. So that's the end of this presentation, but it doesn't have to be the end of your learning journey. There are thousands of free videos just like this one. Remember, better content, better skills, better income, better life. We wanna help you get 1% better every day. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Okay, as promised, here are the five steps you can perform today to start earning free badges for your LinkedIn profile. Step one, navigate to panamir.com and either sign in or join now, it's free. Step two, in the upper left, under the Discover menu, select the course that you want to watch and get badged for. Step three, watch all of the different video lessons in that course. Step four, when it's complete, send your LinkedIn profile and the course you watched and your user ID to badges at panamir.com. And then sit back and wait for step five when we attach a badge to your LinkedIn profile.